Kia ora, welcome along to the League in Order podcast. I think we're up to podcast 12 now. Uh, as I was uploading it, it was up to podcast 12. Lavina jumped the gun a little and said that we're up to 13 a week ago, so I could be wrong. I think you're wrong. Am I really? I'll have to go back and look at it or else I've got all my numbers wrong. It's probably more likely that I'm wrong. And I'm the one with CTE and you're the, and you're the one who's getting us wrong. I've just, my only I thought we were up to like 20, mate. I feel like we're on, on our 20th episode. It's poor education. That's my excuse, <laughs> not CTE. Uh, all right, so this week on the League and Order podcast, we have Phil Gould announced as the consultant for the Warriors, Nathan Brown as the head coach. Uh, the Warriors beat the Seagulls. The Knights win big over the Tigers. Blake Green, man, all he does is win, win, win. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, a bit of an aftermatch function from Cleary. 20k worth of aftermatch match function. He gets a fine. It cost him $1,000 a word. Yeah. Chicken feed, chicken feed. All right, let me introduce you to the crew. Uh, of course, Blake Ashford, former warrior, former tiger, former shark, former just journeyman, absolute heavyweight champion of the world journeyman, and, uh, and Tony Kemp. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, mate. <laughs> Cut it out. How are we both? How do we enjoy the weekend's round before we get into it? Because we do have some very important homework from you, Kempe. Oh, I can't lots wait. Of, lots of rain. Lots of rain in Sydney. I, I Look, I, I liked it. I thought, um, the, still can't pick my nose. My, my <laughs> got, uh, I think, three games wrong. Uh, I didn't pick the Warriors to beat Manly. I thought that Tom Trebojevic was back. He didn't play. Um, but the rest of them... Sort of went to went to uh, went to plan where they were meant to meant to go, but the Warriors I thought were outstanding. I actually think that they're looking fitter. I think I think spending all that time together up on the Central Coast, um, being in and around each other. I looked at Peter Hicker. If you had a look at him, he was he was fat when he started the season, mate. Um, to be brutally honest, but he's on fire at the moment and he's looking fit. And the reason they hung in there after losing two blokes during the weekend is because of because of their fitness. You know, someone's saying, "Oh, we're going to get them in the end," but you know, they've, they've got built a bit of resilience around them at the moment. I, li- I like it. I like what I'm seeing. You know, it's pretty funny you say that. I spoke to Peter Hicku yesterday, and he was saying that because um, they've got a new thing now. I think they get punished uh, for dehydration and mm. turning up late and things. And he's only been punished once, so he's sort of like uh, in the good books. He's looking fit. They done the skin mm. folds. I asked him. He said he's he's well under, well under, no yeah. punishment. So, mate, he's and he's playing for a contract too. Yeah, look, I was talking to a mate. I spent an hour on the phone with a mate um, while the game was being played, and we were just it was a really good discussion. You know, we were talking about all things from what the team looked like to you know, geez, it looks like they're fit and they're enjoying each other's company to the stadium at Mount Smart and the, the rugby versus league scenario and 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 watching the game and the, how how they were just competing. Um, and I, and Peter Hicku in the meantime was you know setting up tries and scoring them down that left edge and I, I honestly I thought you know they have been in camp for a while they they probably are you know what was the comment that they made they had a barbecue with um, the Parramatta boys and and you could tell really you know, his comment was you could tell how close these guys are together and you, if you t- take that as the as the um, I guess from two new blokes coming in you add that that fitness on the back of it yep. well. Jeez, you know, they, they went all right against Manly. They, they went all right the week before. Um, what I like is that they're competing in, in, in and amongst all the controversy. Because it, it was a shit week last week for them. Mm, Seriously. Yeah. It started off as a shit week. Everyone was on their back. Um, everyone's been on their back uh, for a long time here. And then, uh, you know, coming out the back end of it with full guild Nathan Brown and a win against Manly, you know, things are looking, looking quite rosy down there at Penrose at the moment. Well... As rosy as ever, because of course this week it was revealed, uh, Phil Gould goes and changes his Twitter picture, his Twitter photo, profile photo, which I was like, oh wow, look at that. Uh, and there's so, like, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about um, about Phil uh, injecting himself into the game over this side of the Tasman. He seemed to say all the right things when he was on uh, NRL 360. He was saying about how, you know, this is a chance for him to not only help the Warriors out, but New Zealand Rugby League and of course the Pacific game which I had no idea he was so passionate about, the world game. Um, but yeah, so Kempi, what your thoughts, I guess. Oh no, let's, let's start with you, Aish, because, um, or Ace, as we like to call you. What were your thoughts when you saw the announcement and, and heard the announcement, first of all, just about Phil Gould, and then we'll get into the head coach. Yeah, I, did, I didn't like it at all, to be honest. Um, someone who's bagged the club, who sort of, with what the club's put up with this year, and to come out and say they'd only win two games and publicly announce it and say everything's wrong with the club, and to think that, he's the person that's going to come over and fix it when um, his track record, I'll let Kempe get into that, but I don't know 
you know, I know he's been at Penrith. He got rid of Ivan Cleary. Ivan Cleary's come back there coming first. I guess there's more to it than that. But, you know, from the outside looking in, and then you've got, he's gone into the Dragons this year, uh, supposedly to help them. And they're coming worse than, they're doing worse than the Warriors now. So to me, um, you know, we, we'll get into the head coach. But to me, I think this was the worst decision made out of all of the decisions from the Warriors. Well, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think we'll begin into the head coach anyway. That's just part and parcel of being mm. the head coach of the Warriors. You're going to cop it. Um, Brownie's actually, I, I quite like Brownie. He's a so good bloke. I. I, you know, I, uh, I spent some time with him last year um, dishing out a jersey for a Newcastle kid that was playing over here against the Warriors. Um, but we'll talk about that. The full goal, the full goal uh, scenario, I just want to act as a bit of a realist around the full goal appointment um, and and we've got to we've got to allow the public to understand that how that appointment actually works Phil Gould is not going to uplift himself and come and live in New Zealand mm-hmm. okay, let's 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 stop saying that Phil Gould is working for the Warriors he is consulting to the Warriors in and around you know what it looks like um, the peripheral of of how to get a lot of things right given his experience in the game now you can say that he brings a lot of money to the position. You know, he's been around, he's done a lot. He's, he's been a player in the, in, in the competition. He's been a, a CEO in the competition. He's, he's, he's helped Penrith put a high-performance together um, team to, together. And really interesting, Mark, that you talk about Polynesians in the, in the, in the context of what Full Gould is saying. Western Sydney is full of Polynesians. It's, it, it's always been the way. It's where a lot of our people go when they go to Australia and stay in Sydney. They go out to Blacktown and, and the Parramatta's and, the, and out the back of West, uh, West Sydney there. Um, and of course, Penrith are, are probably they have the biggest catchment in Sydney. Yep. But I just, I just want to keep it real. I want to keep this real. So he's consulting, all right? So um, I, was, I got to think about it. Yep. Well, you know, the, fir- the first thing I thought was, well, let's get on with it. You know, now you've got a coach and you've got a. You've got a, uh, a a decent guy with some money in and around rugby league. Let's get on it and, and let's really judge him for the results are going to get. But then I started to think, well, where does it sit in the context of these people being hired? I think we forget that we also had another consultant who was pretty good, didn't we? By the name of Graham Henry. Yeah, actually, yeah. So I everyone for, everyone forgets that that Graham Henry, the superstar of rugby union, came in to consult for the Warriors. Now, how did that go? I now, thought you were going to refer to John Hart. Well, I don't rate John Hart, so he okay. doesn't get a mention. All right, so don't mention him again on the show. Okay. <laughs> um, so you know, so you bring Graham Henry in. You know what I mean? And people forget that we've had a consultant that was meant to give us all this. You know, and, and let's look at it from a New Zealand perspective. So he knows New Zealand pathways. He works with the best rugby union schools. He understands coaching. He's won won a World Cup. You know what I mean? So he's meant to be working with the coaches and so forth and so forth. Someone would se- seem to think that Phil Gould has to do this. In the context of coming to New Zealand, it's a, it's a little bit different. You know, in New South Wales, to build the Penrith High Performance Centre, you've got the state government to, to, to pump, pump all this money in so they can build this, build this high performance centre. Mm. It allowed all these kids to come in and have a pathway into Penrith. Um, he was with the biggest, uh, the club with the biggest leagues club that was throwing revenue around that he restructured to, to make sure that the football department could grow. All right? There's two things that we don't have. One is we don't have a leagues club, and the second thing is we don't have a government that's going to pump money into a high-performance centre. Mm. The third thing that he had was they had State of Origin. Now, State of Origin for New South Wales and Queensland pumps all this money back into grassroots football. Well, we have, How? We, well, because it earns $14 million a year. But then how do they divvy that out to Well, the because New South Wales owns it, and Queensland own it. So the money goes directly back to them. It doesn't go to the NRL. All right. So the, the State of Origin concept filters back down through each of the states. Now, Full Guild is a direct recipient of that. Um, the reason I'm making this point is because when he comes to New Zealand and he wants to do all this, I can guarantee you this, he ain't going to get the money from the government to build a high-performance centre. All right? So he's going to have to work at the Warriors with what they've got. The second thing that he doesn't have is he doesn't have a pathway structure in, an, in a, a New Zealand organisation or NSO, New Zealand Sporting Organisation, that has a pathway here in New Zealand. So he has to start from scratch. My question is, yeah. now how the hell are you going to do that from Australia? Mm. Uh, this is the other thing I want to say is, do we need someone in that position, or can would it be solved if all these bodies joined together? Well, that's the you know the homework that you guys asked me to do is I, I actually think um, that it's a it's not a bad appointment based on his credibility in the game because a lot of it comes down to credibility, and at the moment the Warriors have you know the I. I 
I don't know the number of coaches. Some there's like half a dozen coaches in the last ten years. Um, three owners I know of in the, in the last two years, uh, and there's no stability or credibility based around the club. I think what Full Gould brings to the table in this context is that he has credibility or seems to have credibility. I, I don't know what every other club or every other organisation thinks of him, seems to have credibility across the board. And mm-hmm. now as a consultant, that's a good thing because it opens doors, okay? But what I don't like about the appointment, if they, it's about the structures that come underneath Phil Gould, is that he doesn't live in New Zealand. Now, no one's going to tell me that Phil Gould's going to come and live in New Zealand. Like, no. he's going to visit New Zealand? Yep. Let's, let's get that right. He's going to visit New Zealand. He's going to be seen around the club. But he doesn't live in New Zealand. Now, he lived in Penrith. Okay? He lived out west. He, did, he, he built... He, you know, I remember me and Jim Doyle sitting down with him in 2009, 2010 when he was going on that crusade and we explained to him about our own pathways that we were creating, creating here in New Zealand around the National Sporting Office. I can guarantee you he took a lot of that stuff and he implemented it uh, out at West Sydney because it was a Poly- Polynesian context. So he gets that, but what he, what he doesn't get is he doesn't get the money that comes along with it like he got at Penrith. When he comes to New Zealand, Phil, I'm telling you right now, you get zero dollars. And unless Mark Robinson stumps it up, he ain't getting any. He ain't getting a hell of a lot from the government and he ain't going to get nothing from the national body. And that's what I'm saying. Do we really need him here? Like you're, you're talking about credibility with other clubs and things like that, but is his position that, like can we not have other people in this position that's from New Zealand to understand the game, understand the grassroots? Like even yourself, you know, there'd be other people there that could do a job Instead of paying, I don't say it's a really whatever. A, it's a really interesting conversation. This one, Ace. You know, like I've, I've, there's a guy down in our hometown. His name's Terry Tarmany. You know, he's the one. Who, he's the one who knew I could play. And 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 people that say this is why you know this Peter O'Sullivan being the best person in the world is it's just not right. You know, best t- talent ID person in the world. It just ain't right because all the talent that he spotted had been spotted by somebody else, mm. like the Terry Tarmadys. And you're right, it's around the structures that Full Gould possibly will be thinking about setting up to go back into the game because it's a, it has a wide um, it has wide ramifications around the benefit of branding the Warriors in New Zealand if they get this right. If Full Gould is going to consult from from Australia, then he needs someone in New Zealand to do it. He needs someone in Australia to do it. He needs he needs two football managers in that recruitment talent ID area to be running the sport for him with his strategy and his vision. Okay, because he ain't going to do it. He ain't going to do it. Yes, he's going to sign the top 30 players in the club, but he ain't going to set the structures up in New Zealand on the ground unless he's got people that know what they're doing and can do that for him. I don't know whether that's the, his consultancy and where he's going to head. Part of me leans towards that is what he's going to do because it sort of makes common sense. Um, but but that's what I'm saying. Like, let's get on with it. Let's see what he's going to do. Let's see what he's going to do to set that up. F- fair enough. Well, I get on with it, but I still think it's a waste of a position. I still think that... Um, the NZRL, the Warriors, the ARL, all these bodies should just suck it up for the future of New Zealand Rugby League, for the future of the Warriors, for the future of this country's you know next generation of mm. rugby league stars. I agree with and you, and I I just think it's a waste of a position. I me. agree with you, and I'm and I'm going to talk about that more depth. I don't want to give too much of what I've written. Yeah, down. don't give your homework away. Yeah. Um, but, but what you're touching on is a conversation that we're going to have around the structure. Like I sit on the Auckland Rugby League Board, okay? The Auckland Rugby League Board need to be at the table. They, they, they were at the table as an owner with the Carnival Park Heritage Trust. But forget about that stuff, okay? If you're going to build rugby league in this country from the grassroots up, the Auckland Rugby League, because of their participation rates and the amount of players in Auckland that hit the performance realms, have to be at the table. They have to be at the table. No one with a brain that knows what they're doing would exclude them from the conversation. Mm. Yeah, you would probably, you would possibly have the conversation with them first before you enter the national body because you know how poor the national body are operating. So, I want to see whether Full Gould knows that. I want to see whether Full Gould understands that whether he can create that relationship because I still think. Like Ace is touching on, the main issue here is the Warriors, the New Zealand Rugby League, and the Auckland Rugby League need to come together if they need to be if they're going to build a successful pathway for anybody in the game in New Zealand. I was in a, I'm going to I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you I was in a conversation around a strategy that was being built by the New Zealand Rugby League where Brian Smith stood up and talked. And I don't rate Brian Smith. You know what I mean? He's been around for that years, never won a grand final. 
Um, and when he came here and started to tell people, he was telling people what he was doing and that he was meant to be this, this, this guru of uh, recruitment. He stood up in the meeting and there was me and a couple of other blokes in this meeting. I don't know whether he was having a crack, but he said, there's no one in New Zealand that could do my job. It just came out of his mouth. There's no one in New Zealand that could do my job. I have a guy under study that I'm, yeah, I'm teaching, but to be honest, there's no one here that could do it. And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking, you chump. You know what I mean? How dare you say something like that when, when you've got, I know, I, I know there's two blokes in this room that could do your job, probably do a better job than you. Um, but the, co- the, the, the signing has happened. I, I think that Phil Gould has credibility. You know, he, he, he definitely has credibility in the fan state because everyone sees him on TV and, and have seen him on State of Origin. And, you know, so you've got a wide range of, you know, what, 30 to 50, 60 year olds that, that only see him like that, so they love him. Um, but yeah, he, he, he's, he's been there, done that. The, 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 the big piece of the puzzle that I think excites him is that he hasn't been there and done that in New Zealand, yeah. and, it, and it may be why he signed to help the Warriors. I think, I think there's a lot of other things that have happened on, this, on, the, on the sideline. You've know, you got the New Zealand Rugby League talking to the NRL about development. I think that's got to be thrown into the mix. Um, how he structures it, Ace, I, I totally agree with you. You can't continue to c- create the Warrior model based on an Aussie outcome. It mm-hmm. just won't work. It will not work. It hasn't worked. No. Um, well, let's keep the fire burning because you've already made note of the fact that um, Nathan Brown, you think, is a good pickup for the for the Warriors. That he he'll do a good job for the bo- um, for the club itself. I, look, I I I, I like Brownie. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I've um, I've had a little bit to do with him. I actually contacted him when he lost the the Newcastle job because I thought that was unfair. Um, you know, he seemed to have been heading on the right right track. I, I, that comment he made about Wayne Bennett, I pissed my pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> about thinking with your little head instead of your big head. It was. It was hilarious for a young bloke to be talking about another coach of, of, of stature like that. Um, but unless you knew what he was talking about, you didn't really get it. I, I just thought, you know, guy's got some spunk about him. Um, but he did, he, he, he has shown that he can rebuild a roster. Now, mm-hmm. you know, people, people are going on at the moment, well, you, you know, they've got a decent roster. No, they need to rebuild a roster. And, and you're not talking about rebuilding a, a roster for next year. You're talking about be, rebuilding a roster for future years. You know, you're talking about structures from the, from the bottom up. Um, and I think the partnership with, with Gould, if Gould's any good at this and he can set this up, I think Brownie's a really good... He's, he's, he's likeable. He's, he's, he's got good um, charisma. Um, you know, he, he seemed to have built that decent side at Newcastle, which uh, uh, Brian is, is having some, some, well, shit, look what Brake Green did to the side. They're back in the grand final for me. <laughs> um, but, but I think, I think it's, a, it's a decent sign. I just think how they went around it is a little bit, uh, could have been done better, you know. He was asked, Cameron, uh, at the end of last year when they, when they signed Nathan, was he coming? Was he coming to, to replace Stephen Kearney? And if you read the articles, he was like, "No, he's not." And all of a sudden, Nathan's our, our head coach. You know, well, even I'm, when he put his name in and then pulled it out. And well, there's and again around pulling your name out. There's there's a little bit more going on with that. And I think Nathan's his own man. You know, I think Nathan wants to be able, be able to say why he's you know possibly why he's pulled his name out. He's, but he wants to say, "Hey, I want to do this my way." You know, mm. I don't want to. I don't want to be. Um, Basically, told what I have to do, and and that's always the pro- that's always the problem when you've got private owners. You know what I mean? Like these guys deserve to have a say because they've put the money where the mouth is. So if they can get this right, it's it's a it, it is a. They <laughs> sent me look. You know, he said when he sent me that that text last week about hey keeper, you got the painting of the gym wrong. You know what I mean? The the po- I was making a point. I was making a point. You can you can paint a pig, but the thing's still a pig. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> You can, you can. It, How did we get it, that point wrong? It might like have been a, it simple. might have been a pink pig <laughs> when you when you painted it and turned it into a black pig, but underneath it's still a pink pig. Um, <clears> so <throat> the point I was trying to make was that the DNA from Eric Watson, especially, has still been lingering around that club for a long time. You can't put a paint, uh, a, a coat of paint on the wall when the DNA from Watson is is prevalent throughout the club. Right. You know? So you're you're saying that the Nathan Brown appointment, along with Phil Gould. You've got a feeling like there at least there's some direction coming from ownership saying, look, we're going to hire a couple of good blokes who we know have, have proven themselves to a certain degree in the NRL already, and we're going to, we're going to set a, a, a direction, and we're going to go in that direction. 
And that, it doesn't matter to you, I mean, as much as Phil Gould likes to say, it doesn't matter to you about your emotions that you have within the grassroots and the, and the recruitment. If these guys are happy to recruit from Australia, you're at least happy right now that the club has a direction. Uh, and sorry, and to jump on that, do you think Phil Gould had anything in choosing the coach? No, no, I don't. I think I think the coach. I think I think Brownie was a um, was a t- contender right at the beginning. I think Brownie's helped the choice um, possibly himself by by um, standing up for himself and saying that he wants to run the team. You know what I mean? I think that's how that's all eventuated. Um, but you know, it, Phil Gould isn't going to be. Dis- yeah, he ain't deciding on today. No. Okay, Phil Gould's deciding on the future. So and you're happy with that? You're happy with that well, man at the Well, I helm? am if he can I structure it right. <laughs> Mate, I can't wait for him to come out I, and say... I am, if, yeah, because... He's going to come out and say, give me six years. Well, <laughs> of course he is, because he's a fence sitter. He's going he gonna to say, come, I, I, he possibly, and I've already said this on radio, he's going to come out and say, give me six years, and he's going to see in six months that he can't achieve anything in the first 20 years, you know what I mean? Because it's been 25 years, and they haven't been able to win a, win a, win a grand final. It is not an easy job, what he's trying to, trying to create. Uh, to go back to your point, though, Mark, about are you happy with the direction that they're taking? Yes, I am. I am happy with the direction they're taking. But I'm not happy that... the that uh, I'm going to talk about Cameron George here, that Cameron George isn't getting surrounding himself with people that he can honestly trust, that he knows have... Has, have you know the credibility and the and the mana to build this with him. You know he's picked up people, and I've and and I've named one of these blokes consistently that just does not bring that with him when he goes to the table. And he needs to, you know. And I've got some really good friends down there. You know, I've got some really good friends down there. One of them manages the the, the Warrior team. You know, like and, and used to work with me. Um, but I just, I just think that you know, if they, if Cameron and Mark really want to do this, it needs to be, like, it needs a broom through it. Mm. It certainly does, and I, and it needs to be reset, and it needs, it needs new, vibrant, up to date thinking, um, and the people that can actually deliver. So what they say is what they're going to do. And they get on with it. So is that Phil, is that is that Phil Gould? Is that is oh, that look, I, I, Nathan I, Brown? Are those that's the what new, I was going to say? Is Nathan, Nathan Brown the one that's going to come in and say, "You've already said he's his own man." So mm. will he tell? But it sort of seems like that with every coach. Every coach comes in and wants to. I know with Mooks, Mooks, it took Mooks a year, but then he got Corves in. He got someone like he got his own sort of uh, people in and. His way of doing things. So this is the this is the problem right at the beginning is that you've got people bringing in people. You know what I mean. So you're bringing him, you're bringing him, and you're bringing him. And you know we're talking about the structure, the structured um, view of how you should do things. Uh, you know, and I, you know, 52 now. When I when I took over the Warriors, I was 34, and, and and had a long time to 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 analyse and think about things and how clubs are actually working and some of the pitfalls that they go through and so forth and so on. I just don't. I don't believe that that's the current way of thinking. I I look at models around the world, and I and what I look at are that people have built success, uh, sustained success, on a long term view. Yeah. So they've set up criteria to get them to the top and keep them at the top. And we've really only got one team in the competition that's done that well, and that's Melbourne. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, I you, you mentioned Mox. You know they. There's a, there's a rule that was brought out in 2003 in the NFL called the Rooney Rule. Now, the Rooney Rule basically said that they had to hire, a, uh, they had to interview Afro, uh, minority um, coaches, which were generally Afro-Americans, uh, as part of the structure because of the changing face of the game. Yeah? Isn't, isn't that, that's up to date. You know what I mean? Like, you're thinking in 2003, if someone come out and said that today when Black Lives Matter? You know what I mean? And we're, we're just getting there now in 2020, 21. And the NFL did that in 2003. You know what I mean? And now you've seen a number of first grade coaches come through uh, of, of African descent in the NFL. With the NRL, they should adopt a Rooney rule. Now, even better than that, the Warriors should adopt the NR, a, a, a Rooney rule because our game is Polynesian. You should have significant Polynesian coaches with mana delivering the... Uh, the culture into the club, and they have to be the good cop, okay? They have to be the good cop. Mooks should still be there as an assistant coach. If you look at his success at Melbourne and up yep. at Brisbane, 
Um, and even in the Kiwis when he won the World Cup with Wayne Bennett, he was in the good seat. He wasn't in the minority seat, which is I'm going to have to deliver hard talk to you all the time. You know what I mean? There's a lot of scientific um, stuff around that and why I should do that. But I think you're right. I think you know, if they adopted the Rooney rule and put Mooks back into the assistant seat, I think that's a good I think that's a good that's a good move. You know what I mean? But there's the structures that come underneath what we're talking about are more important than the initial I need to go out and win a grand final. Unfortunately for Brownie, he's gonna be judged on results. They yeah. went through what have they been through six coaches in the last ten years? Yep. I, I, I agree with you on uh most things I agree with Brownie's decision. You spoke about Phil Gould giving him and let's, let's see what he does with it. I'm the same with Brownie, mate. Like, he's had chance. He built Newcastle to basically what they are now. Mm. He signed Mitchell Pearce, Caelan Ponga. He signed all these players. He's built that club up. I reckon we give him time. Um, we un, we're unknown about next year, what's going to happen. They, the, there's still talk the boys could be playing in uh, Australia next year, living over mm. there. And I can guarantee you that if they do that, I can't see maybe four or five of the boys going back and playing. So then he's got another whole thing to come in. So there's there's so many unknowns at the moment around the NRL, let alone the Warriors, that we can't judge him on next year. And oh, when I say judge, I suppose we can judge him, but you can't just put put him straight in the hot seat and go, all right, after next year. That's it. We got to give him a couple. Are, we got to give him a couple years. Absolutely. If things are messed up, and there's a high possibility they will be messed up next season as well. Uh, at this stage, anyway, with COVID hanging around, um, I, I guess for me as a fan, if there was some type of like strategy put in place around how he's going to fill positions and where, you know, if he was doing the building back here rather than results on the field, I'd be happy enough to give him as much leeway as possible. Like the, the idea that, hey, this is our strategy. We're not going to go over and recruit a whole lot of Australians to be in this team. We're actually going to get our best players from here in New Zealand and, and that's a part of the Phil Gould strategy as well. Just cough it up. Sorry, mate. No, you're all right. You're both going at it. Um, and then, and you know what I mean? Like uh, the results on the field to me don't matter as of the rest of the season and next season to begin with, um, So long, especially if it's messed up. So long as there's some kind of strategy around what they're looking to do, well, how they're looking to do you're it. You're talking about when you're talking about players and things like that, I spoke to one of the boys yesterday and he said next year, because there's talk about Kane Evans signing, mm -hmm. they've already signed Ben Murdoch, Masilla, you've got Eli Katoa, who's young, good signing, Jermaine to Noah Brown. Yeah. But he said that there's 15 boys, 15 middle forwards fighting for four or five spots. So mm, I don't know, point. you can't bring any more people really into that squad when you've already got all these people under contract. Well, you know, there's a there's a lot to talk about there, and there's a salary cap, obviously, and managing the salary cap, and how you're gonna again, that's a future that's a future view that they should take about building towards a grand final, you know, um, and the players that they're bringing in, like, are they at the at the back end or the top end? Are they gonna take them to a grand final? I think, and I think that's where the knowledge of full goal comes in. You know, he'll look at he'll look at the strategy in and around recruitment. Because I, I, I think, although he's a consultant and he's going to be talking about the club and the, and the branding and all that sort of stuff, his main position is going to be on recruitment. Yep. So, and I, and I think if they, if they look at it that way, then they need to set the, set the strategy up right. There's so many variables in New Zealand compared to Australia. Like we, we're dominated by rugby, you know, the top the top eight schools that play in their own rugby competition. Mm. You know, we, we, we're dominated by rugby throughout all the junior structures until um, they get to intermediate and high school. Um, you know, the, 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 there is a mentality in this country that unless you play rugby, you can't play league. You know what I mean? It's It's... It's something that he's going to have to combat, but it's also something that he's going to have to come to realise really quickly if he's going to build a junior structure. Um, and that's and you're going to get, going to your point about 15 blokes fighting for four spots, you know, then go to Aussie. That's what I mean. Like, my, my, I, I said this the other week. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at it. Okay, let's have a look at our game. The, the, let's seriously analyse our game. There's a, there's a rugby union CEO... All right, that we used to run Sansa, that is the head of the New Zealand Rugby League. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's got an Australian coach that, that coaches the Kiwis, and he's got an Australian coach that coaches the Kiwi Ferns. All right, now let's have a look at the Warriors. All right, okay, they have an Australian CEO, an Australian coach, an Australian recruitment manager, um, an Australian consultant. They've just taken their team to Brisbane in Australia. Um, so they're your two, they're your two 
top organisations in the country. And in that, in that alone, um, what does it say to the people in this country about how do we go from a that game... That we can play the game, but we can't coach it or organise goodness. We, we, can, we, can, pl- goodness. we, we can play the... This is, more, this is more point about our show, listening to Kenty and Matty Johns and those type of blokes talking shit. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, in, a, you're in a game over here fighting for your life and fighting for oxygen. Mm. You know what I mean? And you're not taken seriously enough. You know, it's... Uh, the. Cameron George could do himself a big favour if he surrounded himself with Kiwis that actually knew what they were talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And built a Kiwi model, a Kiwi structure. So And, and fine with the consultants from Aussie and fine with your recruitments from Aussie and stuff like that because you need that. That's where the main but part of the game Tony, is. But he's got, Tony, you always got um, Stacey Jones around him. Like, there's plenty of Kiwis. Oh, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Okay, su- okay. You're not okay. listening, no, you're not listening to what I'm saying. because I wanted to divert you because this was a good one. Um, Dale Budge is someone who knows a lot about rugby league. You respect Dale Budge and his opinion, and this is on Twitter. The, what was it, last night, I think it was. Uh, so Nathan Brown's philosophy got it up on screen, is payovers for a handful of mediocre uh, Aussies in positions we should be spitting out locals in by the dozens each season. Overs on superstars, overs on mid-range guys, and no local junior or hometown discount. How's that cap management going to go? Oh, he, he's bas- he basically answering to what we've just spoken about, isn't he? Yeah. Like, you know, that, that's the that, that's why I'm willing, like Ace, to say, right, let's, let's see what they do. I, I just see that... You know, you, you're painting a pig. You're, pa- you're painting it, mate. You're not. You're not actually taking that pig to market and selling it and buying yourself a, a steer. I feel you like you've mean? gone and ta- taken two sayings and mixed them up. Like, yeah, I think yeah. it's putting makeup on a pig or putting lipstick on a pig, not no, well, painting saying, a pig. I'm saying painting a pig because they painted the gym. I know, but it still doesn't quite make Leave sense because alone. the saying is argue with lipstick you? on a pig. But I know what you're trying to say. I want to try. All right, let's get into your homework then because this oh, was really I can't interesting. Wait. Have you got it written down? Because if you send me that. I will then be able to put it up on screen. Nah, no, I want to no, see no. your spelling mistakes. Even, I want to see. <laughs> well, I can't spell. I can't spell. You know, my it's kids. My kids used to always say to me, "Spell rhythm." They, you know, like my girl. Tough word. My girl was head head girl at, at her, her school. My son's a, a lawyer. <laughs> and dad dropped out when he when he went to the freezing weeks at the University of Waitara, and um, they always get me because I, I, you know, I'm competitive as they come. You know, they say, "Well, let's have a spelling let's have a spelling competition." Done. Spelling's overrated. And anyway. they get me all the time. Every time. They, they, no matter, they've been doing like they're in their twenties now. They've been they just keep saying to me, "We'll spell rhythm." And I still don't know how to spell it. Oh, mate, it's a tough word. <laughs> it's a it's tough, tough word. word. Uh, okay, so the homework last week was I was I was at a place where I was like, you know what, Kimpy, you say a lot about how the structure is wrong and how you know where the warriors are. A rat, and they're a bit of a rabble and a bit of a mess. For you, how would you structure the club to make sure that in the future we're in a strong position, uh, not only for recruitment but also for on the field action? Look, I I, I think the the it's a re, it's a really hard um, one to answer when you've got private owners. Yep. Okay. Because every private owner. Uh, I have a successful company structure, you know, and, and, and Rob, Robbo's business is worth, uh, apparently worth around 140 Feels million. like you're making excuses, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm, I'm, I'm a realist, mate. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm giving you some background to mm-hmm. some decision making. Um, but there are, there, are, there are examples of how it has worked and how it hasn't worked and how that support has come behind it, mm. even, in a, even in a private ownership situation. We've had some success with Eric Watson over the last 20 years because both Daniel and Ivan, who were the most successful coaches at the club, went to the grand final. They didn't win one. Um, actually, we've only hired one coach. I don't know I don't know if you know this in the last 25 years that has actually won a grand final, which was John Money. He was our first coach. Um, so, you know, it's really hard. Who did he win with? He won with Parramatta. Okay. Back in... Successful coach of the Warriors too. Did you know that? Was he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, it's sort of you know, is that part of the criteria? Like, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get a coach, well, Brownie hasn't won a grand final. Um, if you're gonna get a coach, do they? Is a criteria part of it that they actually won a grand final? So they know they know how to get to it, but they know how to win it. You Kimby, know I mean? can you just give us your fucking so, structure, so, Jesus? <laughs> so anyway, I've I've built my structure around a few points. The first one is we've spoken about is talent ID, and I think I think the Warriors have to, and they can call it the Kemp rule instead of the Rooney rule. Um, <laughs> I love it. Is that we they, are doing it. Is that they should interview Polynesian culture uh, coaches with mana that can be the good cop at the club, mm. all right? That can really engage with the players and the families in the understanding of, of cultural significance in a New Zealand context. And now, especially the, the, the growing of that culture through, as Penrith have said, 15 of the 17 players that played last week of Polynesian culture, 
uh, in Sydney as well. So, And you know what the cool thing about now as well is that culture has never been stronger, never been more exposed and never been more acceptable to mm. the to the everyday person. So before yep. then, it's names timing. were being mispronounced and no one gave a shit. Well, they're still being mispronounced, but um, there's a real effort going into culture right now. So you're 100% right. Someone who relates to that, A, makes the club look good and B, actually helps with players who are now at a place where they're like, you know what, you can't talk to me that way about my culture and how I do stuff. What about Lavina's pick then? Christian Wolf. No, well, Lavina doesn't side. know. Lavina doesn't know the backstories behind that. Um, Christian Wolf isn't the guy. Um, okay. okay, but but down, Mook, yeah. but Mux is. You know, like yep. you, you tell me, you tell me anyone. Oh, I like this. We're going back with Mux. Well, he in a, in that position. Right, and as what is the, the good position coach, again? Which is an assistant coach. Assistant so, coach. So, but you would. What I'm saying is that you would have a rule. They call it the Kemp rule, and you would uh, you would advertise. To, uh, for minority coaches to put their names forward so that you can put them in that assistant position. Because assistant coaches are good coaches. Right, okay. okay. Assistant coach they, and, one. And, and, they're the good, and they're the good cop. Yeah. So, so they, they, they find out things that the head coach is never going to find out. Yep. You All know right. what I mean? I've got so, written down here, Mook's assistant one. Uh, well, cool. and have a look at his track record. Okay. I, can't, I can't write that down. Though. So have a look at his track record. So They do the, a lot of the work as well, don't they? they do, mate, they do more work than a head coach, yeah. trust me. Trust me, they do. They do the donkey's work of work. Are you going to reveal the head coach last? No, I'm not going to reveal the head coach at oh, all. Th- okay. Oh. Um, oh. So I think, I think, I think. Therefore, they introduce a rule. So okay. the Warriors, you know, and they probably lead that into the NRL because I think the NRL this this rule actually goes through the NRL. They should ever the it can go into your well well being your your development people so forth and so forth. You have to have a minority interview so that you can fill those positions. Okay, Kemp rule. Then the, sec- the second part is talent ID, not recruitment. Okay, okay? talent ID. Um, now, a lot of people don't know, I, I actually interviewed, Jim Doyle interviewed me for recruitment when he was CEO of the club. You know, I've got a strong relationship with Jim Doyle. Um, the excuse I got was that I just, I, w- I was too flamboyant. I was, you know. I, <laughs> no, really? I, would, I, I was telling it to, as it was and I was hurting feelings. That's, that's basically the feedback that I got. Um, <laughs> And they went, and they went with someone who gave the job up after a year because he didn't know what he was doing. He's now the assistant coach. Now, <coughs> the biggest part that is missing in this country is talent ID, mm-hmm. not recruitment. Um, and I would set up a talent ID structure, so I would go throughout the country and set up with key people throughout the country because this is this this has a ripple effect. Set up with key people in the country, like the pe- person that identified Tor Harris, the person that identified Isaac Luke, the person who identified Simon Mannering. You know, we're talking Nelson, Hawkes Bay, Wellington, just in those three areas, um, and make sure that they're coming to me all the time with their best players because. This is where recruitment works. They say they, they've got the best kid. No, well, they haven't. They've been told that the best kid is playing in this area. They go down, and Dean Bell offered to, to Ivasha Sheik 20 grand. Pete O'Sullivan offered him 100 grand. Where are you going to go? Yep. Where are you going to go? Seriously. So what's, the, so what's the difference between talent, ID, and recruitment? So it's just that, that you would get to, if you're the recruitment manager, you would get to go down and look at You would person. get down and go and look at that person before they went to tournaments. Okay, so you can't, getting to a tournament is too late. For the Warriors. So the Warriors need to be on the front foot. They need to be proactive and they need to be in the talent ID relationships across the country right from the beginning because they're going to see the best rugby kids and the best league kids right before every good talent ID person, like the guy who knew me down in Taranaki, knew that I could play footy when I was 12. All right. Okay. So let me get this straight. You've got assistant coach one as Mooks. Um, you've you've created a person called Talent ID, and I don't want to read too far into the tarot cards, but it sounds like Tony Kemp's getting that role. No, no, oh, no. You just, it said you, no, no. It's not. It's the person in each of the districts, okay? And we've got sixteen districts across the yeah, country. Yeah, but who are they reporting to? Then I'll go to recruitment. Okay. Okay. Then okay. I'll go to recruitment. So you need a whole lot of talent so ID you, people. So you just need, you know, you're like you're like you're, patience. You're, you're like your you're like what your wife's told me, mate. You come. Too early. What right, was the question? All right, just, she hasn't just, said just that. sit back and take your time, mate, right. and relax. Okay, okay. Right. So tell them ID. Enjoy, is, enjoy it, mate. Enjoy. I'm, it. I'm writing it down because enjoy I'm going to put post this afterwards. Right. So you want to get to the end too quickly. Flame That's what you're saying, He's not flame boy. In and out, mate. In and out. <laughs> in and out. Anyway, Several anyway, places. so that's the first that's the first thing that you'd do is you'd set that up. Okay, so what did, what that does is the ripple effect. So you're branding the warriors also. So you're in the, you're in each of the districts and you're getting the best kids. 
because that's what we need. Now, I've said this all, all along. Every kid that plays in New Zealand should play for the Warriors first and foremost. It's the club that they need to go to. They don't want to go down to Wellington or Nelson or, or Dunedin and the kid says, I want to go to Melbourne. No, no, mate, let's, let's, let's rebrand it. Okay, so let's get into the communities with the best talent ID people and set them up to be warrior talent ID people. Then you move to recruitment. And this is where I think that they've got the, they've got the start with Full Gould. But what Full Gould needs is he needs two um, talent ID managers to manage both Australia and New Zealand because the talent ID needs to be mirrored in Australia. So, And he would have that already. So he would have New South Wales, Queensland and Melbourne already tied up. All right? But the Aussie guy takes care of that for him because Full Gould's a consultant. Yes? So what you do is you have two talent ID managers. So there's two, there's actually three positions in the recruitment department. One of them is recruitment and the other one are two talent ID managers. One sitting in New Zealand, one sitting in Australia. Now, so, I, I, do, are you nice and clear with that, Mark? So uh, you still sorry, want, yeah, you still want um, us to get people from Australia? If we 100%. But, yep. but, but what you have to do is you have to create pathways in New Zealand to, to mirror Australia and also engage with the Australians. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So let's talk about Australian schoolboys. Yeah? Yep. yep. Okay. Most of the great players come out of the Australian schoolboys, mm -hmm. don't they? Yep. They go to this tournament, they play Keeper Highs and they go up to these tournaments. Endeavor the Dave Fafita yeah. come out and they go to, you know, down to Canberra Sports and Endeavour Sports, yeah. And all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, and they go along and they go to the Australian schoolboys and all the managers. This is where the Moseses and the Gillies and all them started. The was it at, at, in the <laughs> at the Australian schoolboys. Yeah? Yep. Okay. What we need to do is we need our kids to be mirrored in that pathway, all right? So the recruitment head's job is to mirror that pathway and take kids from New Zealand into that Australian pathway so that we're building strength and understanding what it takes to be an NRL player because it's a proven model. Right. Yeah. So it, it's proven for Australian teams. But in, in Australia, we have in Australia. We well, have, how many times have the Warriors won the grand final? No, no, that's what I mean. It's proven as an as an Australian, like a, it's good for Australian model, but it's not necessarily. We haven't done it here in New Zealand. We haven't. But how, yeah, how do we get that into the that's schools? I mean. Because in Australia, it's in the school. So we just brought up Kiva. We bought. I brought up Endeavour where I went. There's all these schools that have these rugby league programs, but over here we can't even get a look in in a school to have a tour. There, there's it's a tournament. Because, we're, not, because we're, we're, doing the same, we're doing the same thing and we're getting the same result. Yeah, yeah. but you're going to do the same thing over again, but you're going to you're going to feed the strength of the Australian model because we're going to put our players over there to, to experience as a As a, see, one of the things that you could do is you could actually take a New Zealand team and insert it into the Australian school board competition. But we're still not making the game stronger here. What if you got a but way you, that you did you that are. here? Yeah, I know. That, that's the long-term view, isn't it? Okay, well, okay. So that's the long-term view. Now I'm looking at long-term and you're bursting out, spraying all over the place early. No, no, because you asked for, you've asked yeah, for an immediate, yeah, yeah. immediate, you know. Absolutely. So what I've got now from your from your positions in, in charge, you've got talent ID people, which is several people around um, important regions in New Zealand and Correct. Australia or just and, in, and Australia. And Australia, because you'd okay. have an Australian manager and a New Zealand cool. manager. And then at the top that. of that, you've got two talent ID managers. One sits in New Zealand, one's in Australia, and then they report to recruitment. 100%. Which would be a Phil Gould or someone. Who takes care of the top 30. Okay, so he yeah. takes care of the top 30 and he's building the depth in around that, that backbone that I'm talking about that is creating this, you know, this groundswell of talent coming through all I'm the time. I'm liking this. I'm okay? liking this. All right, who else? So, so, so then you, th that would be my recruitment strategy. Okay, that would be my recruitment strategy. In a 10-minute in a, in a in interview, because that's all you get these days, you get 10 minutes to present. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that would go on that you'd backfill it with. I, hope, I can't wait to see what Phil Gould's got. The next, thing, the next thing I'd look at is a general manager of football. All right? So there's this talk about a general manager of football. But general manager of football should be general manager of football. Not general manager of the club, CEO of the club, um, and, and dipping out of everything else other than football. He should just be focused on football. The best in the game is Frank Panisi. And what a great time to go and talk to him. Because, you know, you talk, you're looking at Bellyache and he's talking about getting out at the end of 2021. Mm. And Frank Panisi's sitting there who is the best in the game at being a football manager. Um, I'd go and talk to him. I, you know, I don't need to explain why because he has a track record. He has a track record. He is very successful. I've, I've dealt with him personally, Frank. And he is the master at this game. All right? He, he is the one bloke that would make a significant change to our fo football department. Because he's basically the glue. Like he's bringing everyone together in that football department to make sure that he's getting the best out of the team, okay? So that's a really that's, that's a really the general manager of football. That's a, that's a, that's the that's the uh, that's a straight up and down one for me. I'd go straight for Frank if I was sitting there. 
Then I would hire a team psychologist. Okay? Team psych. Mm. I would. I would. Mental and skills coach? Would, and no, 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 no. Hang Trust on. Me. Hang on. Listen to the size. You know what I mean? And this is why they don't hire psychologists because they, they don't really understand what their roles are. The people that make the size. Now, a team psychologist is is versed in psychology. They're versed in how to get people to, to prepare and be the best that they are. So, so that's what you're hiring. You're hiring this person that can activate those people to, to be motivated to actually understand um, why they're there and why they're doing it. That's the key. What they do is they help them understand why they're there and help them understand why they perform and help them understand to build this culture that drives it. There's a girl, her name's Pippa Grange, all right? She worked at the AFL. She was head of, a, 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 uh, she was head of Geelong back in 2011. Um, we, went and, we went and spoke to her. She helped. It, um, she was a significant part was, was, um, why we got to number one as the New Zealand side. Um, because what she do, did was she got people to understand what their roles were within a club. So she used psychology to make them a better person and a better player. All right. And in hindsight, she went. She went back and she worked for the English football team. She took them nearly all the way to winning a World Cup. Right. Really? Yes. She was in charge of the Maybe one she, on charge. So I would talk team. to Pippa. I would talk to Pippa. Maybe she might be the right one just because there's been so many over the last That's four or five years that I've been there and they've had each of their, they've all had their own different techniques. Yeah. But their thing is that, say, maybe half the group um, understands that technique and buys into it and, underst- like I said, understands it and it resonates with them. But then the other half just don't want to, don't want a part of it. And yeah. it happens to each person that comes in yeah i think i think you really need to have a strategy around wh- where you're headed to which she helps you help sort of sort sort that out but the main thing that i i gained from pippa um and have watched her you know still today i've been following her on a few posts um is that she gets people to understand you know what i mean she it's not it's not hey i'm coming here and spend an hour with me like you're watching billions and i'm going to turn you into a, a psych machine and win win stuff you know what i mean she actually gets that person to say because a lot a lot a lot of the a lot of the questions that she got people to answer was do you actually understand what being a leader is and taking them on the journey from where they are to where they should be you know what i mean and i think that's a real key piece that's missing in, in at the warriors so she would be another person that i'd go and and directly talk to if you couldn't get her she would know of someone um but but they're a really hard person to find it's not a person that sits in here and and, and works with your with your psychology about your mental mental illness and stuff like that it's about leadership the other person that i would hire was i'd hire wags liaison what a wags liaison. So the wives of the listen, footballers. Listen. Yeah. The wives and girlfriends of footballers. This is where this is where we're missing the boat. Okay. So I would hire a, a, a wags liaison. The wags liaison would be. Her you can't role. be called that. It's well, that's a wife some, and girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wife and girlfriends. What yeah. else? What else are they? So they've Partners. had. So they've had people. They're life partners. Had, they've had people at the club that um, talk and things with the the girls and the partners before. Yeah, I just. Well, yeah. I just don't think they understand what their roles were. You know, we're talking about depth defining role descriptions and this is a key one you know like if yeah, you th- this is this is definitely one from their field for me i didn't yeah, expect so, you were going to so go this to, deep with to, it that's good though to, like today it. in today's um game the wise player is as, as big a part as the players in their football career did you have someone in mind as the oh, know, look, I, I, partners liaison look, I, I think that one is um uh, it has to be current it, ha- it has to be, that one is a changing space and it would be a really, really tough job because in- imagine trying to get, you know, 30 wives together that have their, you know, Jesus, you think I'm outspoken. Imagine having 30 of, 30 of me sitting in the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be, t- it'd be a tough job. But if you think about it... Why do you need it? Well, because they feed back all the stuff that you're never going to hear. You're never right. going to hear Mate, they, they do, but I, I've got to say that the, the clubs that I've been involved with, the Warriors do it the best. Yeah. Well, so the Warriors do it the best. There thing. we go. So so I would I would continue with I would continue with that and I'd continue to manage that. And How do they do it, Blake? What do they do? Oh, there's just things that they look after. So like on game day you'll have like a crèche for the kids so the and they'll have a suite for the, the partners to go right. up and watch the game. They have um, they inform the girls with um, the scheduling. Yeah. Um, they have someone that gets in contact with them and I don't know how it's been this year. Obviously, I'm not involved this year, but yeah. over the previous years, so it's been good. It's been oh, because at the Tigers and things like that, I, my little boy was up in the stands, freezing, raining, nah. and you know the wife's got to get into him and things like. But like, that I'm not sense. saying, but like 
other clubs don't have the steps in place that the Warriors do. So what you're wanting to do, Kempi, though, is you're wanting to take it to a next level where these wives could, in fact, help part of the feedback. Leadership group, mate. They could feed back to the players when they're at home. Should you be eating that? Yeah, so the, so the liaison... Oh, you need enough the, sleep? Well, the liaison... The, yeah, look, the liaison works as a conduit between the, the football... Um, hierarchy and the players. Can I just say, I feel like we just really struck a chord there. Instead of saying, should you be eating that? I feel like Blake had during his career, should you be drinking that? And that's why he went, oh. I don't need to hear No, he wasn't thinking that. I think that's that. smart. He, 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 he wasn't thinking that at all, but I, I knew what he was thinking about. <laughs> that's a smart investment though. I quite like that. All right. So we haven't got a person in, in, in mind for the WAGs liaison? No, no, no I, got, I, think, I think you've, you know, there's, there's a number of options that you go through there and that'll depend on the rest of the crew being set up or who they, they isolate all right i think I, I do i think there is a girl in new zealand that does it and her name's carmen tapman i think she'd be a, a fantastic uh, person that was just given that role as in the in the management team the next one i'd go to i'm only got i've got two more here um i would go to a team manager of stature like someone like a simon mannering okay, okay. so th this is when they're talking about simon mannering coming on to the recruitment panel for the coach all right they got the concept right I got they got the position wrong. Team manager, what have you called it? Liaison. No, no, team manager. So you have Just a team, team manager. manager. So okay. team basically a team manager is the person that drives culture. Okay. Okay. So he drives what's expected of this club. Coach. Who better than Simon Mannering currently? Yeah? So you would you would add Simon to the team. His position would be team manager. He would manage the day to day runnings. Brent Webb. <laughs> I like Webby. I like Webby too. I yeah, always see him around. Like, um, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about currently the best. For me, I, you know, Simon. I think he's articulate enough and smart enough to pick that role up and run with it. Um, I would have him as my team manager. So I'm, it's, it's, I'm not yeah. having a shot at who they got at the moment. I don't I, think uh, he'll do it though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm what I'm saying. Who's is in that, that role at the person, moment? I think you got Dan Floyd there at the moment. Right. Um, Demanding it. He's a good, he, great bloke. I love him. He's like a brother. Um, but it has to be values driven. That position has to be values driven. Like, you know, if you fuck up, you're going to be told by Simon Mannering. You know what I mean? Can we put Ooh. Dan in the WAGS um, you know, liaison position? I'm going to go back to a real simple. We're sitting in Eden Park. I'm, I'm looking. I'm, we're sitting in Eden Park. Who picked up the broom and swept up swept up the room? Uh, in, in Eden Park uh, for the blue season this year. No, but who who started that? Who picked up the broom and and swept? Graham Was, Henry. No, I feel like I should know this. No, no, it was the captain. All right, it was the captain that picked up the broom. Patrick Toy Richie, Richie McCall. Oh, Richie. Oh, swept, you're talking about all They swept the, the room. What I'm saying is it's value-driven. It's right. value-driven. So if he does something, they know it's driven by the right values. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's someone to reinforce that. The last, one I, the last one I'd bring into the club, and I don't know whether they do this anymore, but I'd bring in a pastor. All right, I'd bring in a pastor of re religious belief. We see it happen before and after games where the, where the players take a knee and they're saying prayers. But a pastor has a, a key role to do within a Polynesian culture. All right, There's church on Sunday, there's, there's religious families, left, right and centre, and they act as a social worker and engage between the, the club and the families. And I've, 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 I've made this comment before. How many coaches go and sit in church with a player on a Sunday? Hmm. You know what I mean? How many how many coaches how many how many coaches actually understand that part of their life? The decision to come home. Do you do you not think that there's some connotation around religion? Oh, hundred percent. If you were looking to win this game and get all the play, the, especially the Polynesian boys, back to New Zealand and playing for the Warriors, you put a good pastor in there that they all trust and love mm. and like being around. And it, you're right, it's just another tick in the box that doesn't have appear on any other teams if you're looking to. So I know, I know Cameron George is going to share this with Full Gould, and Full Gould's going to pick up all those um, those titles and, and and take the accolades for it. Um, but but you know this the the point I'm trying to make is that it's yeah, wider. Standing O, okay, we can't wider. see you. Come back down to the camera. <laughs> Go the other way <laughs> around. You know you could you know in a short in a short interview it's a it's about trying to make. I thought you know. What I'll try and do is make some points around what I think the structure's missing and lacking. Um, and I just, I just think that, you know, when I've looked at all this, the, the, I keep going, I'm, I'm sorry, Cameron, but I keep going back to Cameron George, okay? I keep going back to the CEO. He's, he's, he's in the hot seat. Let's, let's get that one right. I think that Cameron can do himself a massive service if he surrounds himself with really, really good people. Well, he started that. Well... With Phil Gould, Nathan Brown. I mean, we haven't... So we he's painted the head of that pig. Yeah. 
What well, he yes, needs to do is he needs to paint the body. Mate. But as you said before, recruitment and all those other things are going to have to take time to, to fall into place. you just got to hope now with these two people that they've got in place that that is one of their focuses and it does start happening. Mm. Um, I I loved everything you put up there. So do I. I've got I've got a rabbi like who we can actually. call instead of a pastor if we wanted. I'm joking. That was a joke, you know, because it could get, you know, well, that's not my religion, but we're going for the, well, the exactly. bulk majority. Um, so well done, Kempi. Well done. I felt like that was the world's longest um, job interview, and it's all out. There. <laughs> it's out there now. Well, well, you know, it looks, geez, if you spend as much time as me with your head in football, yeah, um, which is great. Yeah, look, I I just I just think that. You know, it's it's my opinion. It's my opinion, um, but I'd I'd like to look at models and look at structures and 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 try to think how other people are thinking and where they're going with their thoughts. And I, the other thing I like is I love talking to people. So, you know, I was having a conversation with a mate, you know, for about an hour in the car down here, and we're talking about all sorts of stuff, you know, and we're we're talking the same thing, and it's reinforcing. You know, he works in Aussie. You know, one of the things I I wrote down this morning. Um, and, but I deleted it, was that I honestly think in today's day and age there's a place for a player manager to sit within a, a group at the club to advise the club. You know, I think until the NRL grows the balls and sorts that issue out, that we need a credible, uh, someone with credibility and that's doing it for the right reasons, give us an advice in and around why they're making decisions about taking players to and throw from places, you know what I mean? Um, and it's a, it's a really grey area, but... I think if you if you if you're good enough, you can create that um, group of people that's actually going to be not, the best thing for the club. Do you not think that players aren't like back in the day? You signed a deal, you you stay there, but now as soon as you get a taste of first grade and then you get dropped, players don't take it the same way as they used to, and they get on to their managers, and then they're like, "Mate, I need out. I need out." He doesn't. Well, like Greeny me, does did. I? You know what I mean? Like Greeny, Greeny, they, you don't know what's going. on. He's got Isaac Moses a copy. Well, yeah, but he, he but, but he got he got told. Greeny obviously yeah. got told. But there'd be p- kids these days that are like, ah, oh, you know, like spit the dummy. Oh, of course, like you know, can you get me some boots? Like that, that one, that one pisses me off. Mm. I earn eight hundred thousand dollars a year, but can you get me a boot contract? Well, go and buy your own boots, mate. You know what I mean? Like, like what a what a waste of what a waste of energy. Mm. Can, can you you know what I'm saying? Like. That I think I think I do think they're different. Like I l- I watched the Mule the other day on TV talking about. You no, know, he's a great bloke. I had a couple of beers with him and played against him when he was in, in England and Manly. Um, and he's talking about when he signed to go from where was it St George no Souths to Manly. And he's he goes oh I got paid I got paid decent money. Oh, yeah, it's nothing compared to today. But he said I would have gone for free just so that I could play in the team that I always wanted to grow up and play with. Now that's gone. Mm. There is no, there is none of that, you know, and there is such a, um, there is such a belief that has been built in our young people that they can get what they get. It's a massive issue that that basically goes through all of professional sport. Um, and you're right, Ace. If they don't get what they want at a club, it's so easy to go to another club. Yeah, it needs to, you know, and you know what, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the NRL. Mate, you sign a yeah, contract, yeah. you got to, you stay there. That's your, that's. You know, contracts are like toilet paper, mate. Yep. You know, they're written on. They're, they're not even worth mm. the paper they're written on. Speaking of, you, oh, you can't even see what I just did. Oh, I, I like tried that. To, tried to tried to actually write up your team there and then, but um, Jeez, I, have, it, was, it was good effort. You have long conversations. You said you had a convo watching the footy the other day for an hour. You had a convo hour in the mate, car. You, mate, that's a make, long phone call. If you make it into my network, you got to talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know you've been. You, 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 all your all your text messages about you got to win it for me. You got a winner for me. <laughs> you're like the cra- crazy punter that you're always asking. Hey, have you? Um, speaking of winners, I think uh, Thursday night's game wins out overall, doesn't it? We've got the Melbourne Storm taking on the Roosters. No. Uh, that's no. you don't reckon that's exactly. not going to be game of the round. He don't like either of those clubs. Mate. No, no, Melbourne's out. Like Melbourne's got Smith out, Munster out. Yeah, so, it's still a game and a half no. though. Uh, yeah. Or are you are you more in, uh, in favour of the Warriors v Panthers? Now we really know how they. Oh, look, I am. I'm, I I really want to see how how they're going because mm-hmm. the Penrith Panthers are the team of the, at the right. of the moment. You Test know? yourself against that. Well, that's right. You know, we're not we're not testing ourselves against the middle of the table. Now we're hitting the top. Mm. So imagine if they win that game, mate. We're going to oh, come back and eat some humble pie. You know what I mean? I did say that. I think. About six weeks ago, we'd make the eights. I don't know, but hey, <laughs> I, I, I did say it. I still feel like you're clutching it. at straws, Ace. I did say it, but yeah. Confidence, confidence. That's I kept right. it quiet. Did you? We, we'll we'll mock it. Yeah, we'll have to bring that one back <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll bring it recorded. back. All right, team, that's us for another week. Thank you guys all for listening. Oh, Thank you for watching. Uh, Kempi, good work. Mate. Thank you, guys. Outstanding. Outstanding.
and we'll see you next week. Ka kite anō.